Hey guys, it's Trent, and today I want to talk to you briefly about how to paint out some of your line art. This is something uh, several people have been asking me about in my comments, and I just want to kind of give you a few tips on how you can kind of get rid of some of the hard line comic booky kind of a feel and get something that feels a little bit more like a painting. And uh, the first thing that I did here, I actually kind of retro uh, fitted this. I went in and reverse engineered it and, and traced out a little bit to give you the line art because I sometimes I just paint directly in paint so what I've done is I've created a new layer and let's say that that's like my my line art let's say that this is my line art um, and then what I would do is I'd kind of go in and fill in, in in flats now this is actually like more rendered uh, but I would I would kind of paint that in in flats and now this since it's on a layer underneath this and let's say that this layer is set to multiply. Uh, that's going to say that's going to make it so that now if I copy and paste that, you'll see a little bit more of what I'm talking about. Uh, that's just our, our straight up line art. Um, <clears throat> and the traditional method of coloring line art is to have flats underneath that. So you just take like a hard pencil brush and uh, on the layer underneath your line art, you'd go in and fill that in and flat. And they actually call that in comic books, that's literally called flats. Let me just go ahead and fill that in real quick. I'll time lapse it. Now you can fill in your flats with just about any brush. In this case, I'm just using like a hard round pencil. I have a number of different brushes that I use, but it really just, I mean, you could even make selections and then fill it in with an airbrush. It doesn't matter as long as it's sort of filled in as a solid flat color. We'll add depth later. You'll notice that because my line art is on another layer that's set to multiply, anything that I paint is just going to go right through that. So if I paint that green through, I keep my line art on top of it. I've covered that in a few other videos. So the next step would be to look at our, our, our separate out our line art here. Um, if we switch it off, I mean, we're already kind of getting that non-line drawn kind of a look. But let's say we just back that off a little bit. We set that down to like 50%. Well, we're already getting somewhere. We're already kind of, we're keeping our forms and our guides. The, our line art really just serves as like a sketch. It serves as the, the structural shape of things and um, probably the next step would be to go in and begin to think in terms of shadows and start to give some depth to it and one of the reasons why a lot of people don't cover this is because there's so many layers to it there's so many ways that you can give a little bit more depth and make your your line art drawings look more painted um, these are just a few of those tips the the thing that i'm going to suggest here is to go in with your shadows now i would create a new layer and then I'd find my shadow color and I'd go in. That's a little, that's a little strong. So I'm going to actually paint it in anyway. And I'm going to set this layer to darken. And then I'm going to back it off. The, here's the opacity here that'll knock that down to like 50%. So now my shadows are less intense on that surface. But I'm still, I'm pulling out forms. I'm still making more depth to it, uh, adding more depth to it. And part of this is there's there's a, as I mentioned, it's a complex thing to like start to get your lighting down, for instance. Um, but the more you begin to think in terms of, okay, my light is coming from over here. So that means I'm going to have shadows on this part. And I'm, my shadows are going to, because it's not going to, the, the light is not going to be hitting this side as much as the other side. You know, this would kind of then fall into shadow. So let's go ahead and kind of fill in our first layer of shadows and give a little bit more depth to our flat colors. This whole side of his face is not going to get very much light because it's on the side of the face that does not get as much light, obviously. So mostly filled in with shadow, obviously. Let's give a little bit of depth to the hair up here. Now we could probably even back off our line art just a little bit more and notice that our structure is still feeling like we've got a good feeling that it's less comic booky than what we see here. It's less high contrast. 
uh, where we still have our shapes defined, now we can add in some highlights to things and add, that'll be like our phase three of adding depth to our object. So I've already got like a little bit of a highlight here. Now one of the things you wanna remember when you're doing a highlight is to color shift a little bit. So here I grab the lightest color that I have and then I'm gonna click on the color and I'm gonna color shift it to a little bit more of a yellow, a little bit warmer on the spectrum because it's a highlight and the light would in mostly, most likely be a little bit warmer. In this case, I'm gonna make the light a little bit warmer than the shadow areas. The shadow areas will have a little bit more blue or purple mixed in. I'm gonna add in some contrast here to make that pop out just a little bit. Let's do that with all of our surfaces. And if the shinier it is, the more light it's going to get, by the way. And let's remember that while we're doing it. Oh, by the way, I made a mistake here. I'm actually doing that on the, uh, the line art layer. So let me, let, me, let me correct that by selecting it. Don't make my mistakes. Uh, let's select it. We won't be able to select everything. Let's copy it or cut it and then paste it and then make sure that that pasted layer goes underneath our line art, probably just above our color flats and then maybe set that opacity down just a little bit. Now, if we wanted to add a little bit of like glisten or shine or specular as it's called, let's go farther up that color, color uh, spectrum up here. A little bit more yellow, a little bit more saturation and just pop that in right here. Make sure that we're on our little highlight layer. Speculars are dangerous, but they can really make your piece pop and they can make your materials really shine. Ha <laughs> ha, get it. So let's do that with the hair as well. This one's polar opposite, but let's add a little bit of warm color to it. Sometimes I will just grab a little bit of white and blend it in. Now with metals, uh, one thing to remember, especially with regards to line art, is that your edges should be the opposite. They shouldn't be black. They should actually be much higher uh, contrast in the opposite direction, so or the opposite value. So in this case, I'm going to add a little bit of like an almost orange highlight to it, and it's going to be very, very, very uh, saturated and very high contrast, so almost a white. And here's what I mean. Here we have this like black line. We're gonna paint over that and we're gonna end up, I wanna do this actually on a layer above my line art because I am painting over my lines. And notice that it almost turned a little bit like greenish. We don't want that as much. Really the color doesn't matter as much as the values because you're gonna use Color Dodge later to saturate it out. See, we wanted to get rid of that line art and then just add higher contrast on the opposite side. Because our background is white here, we can just go straight up white and paint that out entirely. Noise. We're on that layer that's above everything too, remember so. And it's a good chance to kind of massage some of our highlights a little bit and make sure that it doesn't look too, uh, too flat and too shiny. You can use a variety of different brushes. I have a good selection of, of various different textured brushes and more painterly brushes that I use. I was trying to just use the pencil thing to communicate the ideas here, but uh, you can use whatever brushes you want to get whatever kind of color blending you prefer to make your forms pop out. I find that I don't like as much of a strong cartoony hard edge on things so that means I gotta blend these together and there are cool blending tools in uh, Sketchbook Pro as well as well as Photoshop every halfway decent painting software has a good uh, blending tool nowadays I like to get a little bit noisy especially as I move away from line art uh, because it creates a little bit more of like that messy brush stroke feel that the eye just looks at and fills in some of the blanks with. So adding a little bit of like texture to things with whatever uh, textured brush that you might have uh, is, is helpful. Now we're gonna address this saturation issue that we're having here because it still feels a little bit uh, flat. Uh, we're gonna address that in a minute. 
first I want to go in and make sure that my uh, make sure that a lot of this stuff gets rendered out too. Because getting painting out your line art isn't just about removing the lines. A lot of times it's about making sure that your forms still are they're still turning with the shadows or using shadows using material definition to really turn your forms. Check out my easy art lessons tutorials to add shadows and turn form. Another trick that you can do is just add your shadow to the opposite side, the shadow side. So you might have uh, a dark area. It shouldn't go as dark as your line art uh, that you, you were trying to get rid of on the opposite side of where the light would be. In this case, I want to kind of make that pop out like that's maybe a tube of some kind of energy. So I'm going to do a really high contrast highlight in there. You'll see what I mean. And then a little bit more saturation is going to make it feel like it's glowing a little bit. And one of the tricks, another trick that I like to use for painting out my line art is I'll create a new layer on top and I will fill that in with a color. For instance, I'll grab my darkest color and then I'll say, well, what color do I want my shadows to be? Maybe like grab this slightly lighter, almost purplish blue and uh, set this layer over here to a lighten layer. You could try other layers like screen or color dodge or things like that, but I'm just going to do this as a light and layer real quick. There it is. And grab a nice texture brush and then go in and start to add a little bit of like a textured element to my, my lines. You can actually do this with any of your line art. You'll notice it'll work really well over here too. And that's an even quicker way to kind of start to paint out. If you already have a piece that has a lot of line art, you could grab something like a layer that's a lightened layer like this and just start painting it out that way. And that could save you a lot of time as well. I'm just grabbing colors from my shot uh, using the, uh, the Option key or Alt on a PC. And I'm painting out the lines. So that's the super quick, cheapy way. You'll notice, let's look at the difference. I mean, it looks so much less cartoony with that. But you have to be careful if you have a layer, for instance, that's like a dark layer behind everything, because look at what happened. Ooh, doesn't work so well. Uh, the way to fix that would be that you'd have to actually go through that layer where you've done your lighten layer, and you'd have to erase out the mess that you've made wherever you don't want that mess to be made. I can use other elements such as a, uh, a color dodge or a color burn, for instance. Uh, let's do a color burn to uh, darken. Uh, let's, let's also pick a, a textured kind of a shadow brush and I'll start to paint in a little bit here to create a little bit of a shadow. But it's a little too much, it's a little too intense. Uh, color dot, or Color burn can sometimes be just a little bit a little too much uh, going on. It's great when you're trying to create depth uh, to something that's feeling a little too flat, but it adds saturation to your shadow areas. Another technique is to use the color dodge. And you'll notice how that'll kind of pop things out, but you have to be careful which color you have selected. It, as I said, I like to use like a warm, so uh, a lot of times I'll pick like a, a red or an orange. Um, a dark red or orange and use that for my color dodge layer uh, because it'll kind of create the illusion of light a little bit more. Oops, I accidentally turned on one of the tools. But these things can get out of control really fast and uh, I want to encourage you to use some caution with the color dodge and color burn because before you know it your whole piece could end up looking like a bag of Skittles and uh, and that just doesn't allow for any focus of control because your highest point of saturation is almost always going to be your focal point of your piece. And you'll notice like when you look at that now, the eye goes almost to, directly to there. But it's also the same reason why most people don't like to use a white background, why most people will do something with a darker background, because you get a little bit more of um, a less blown out look. You can control where the lights are going. You can control where the eye is focused. Let's go back up to our 
uh, color dodge layer and erase out some of that messiness. So there are a few there are a few different tricks that you can use to paint out your line art. Uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and time lapse for a little bit and uh, make a little progress on this, and I'll be back in a, a moment and we'll cover any other details that I might think of to wrap this one up. Uh, give you a few tips for painting out your lines. All right, let's do it. Sometimes you can quite literally just paint out your lines. <laughs> Using a combination of that lighten layer, let's let's do this with the red here. Using a combination of that lighten layer and uh, just going in with like another kind of red here, that just makes your line art look like a shadowed element uh, or a shadow uh, value. And then literally just on top with a normal layer, go in and paint over anything to kind of touch that up. And then, of course, adding a little bit of specular to it uh, will will pop it out even more. Now, I've talked about this before, but the level of specular highlight that you should be using is directly related to the type of material uh, that it is. So, for instance, if it's kind of a fuzzy, softer material, it's not going to have a lot of high, bright, uh, saturated uh, specular. But if it's uh, uh, like a leather jacket or a, if it's a wet surface, for instance, you're going to have a lot of little specular highlights and white little specks and things like that, like his jacket there or the metal. So to get a little bit less of a cartoony look, when you see edges like this, uh, where that's a shadow, uh, it definitely helps to do some kind of a blending so that it's a little bit less of a strong shadow. But keep in mind, this is your core shadow, so it should also be very saturated uh, just in that little spot. And it's usually right where the light is meeting your shadow color. And now if this is your overwhelming shadow color, this sort of desaturated greenish gray then maybe try to work that into a lot of your shadows uh, all throughout your piece because in a sense that's your kind of secondary light and it's gonna bounce off of everything in fact it should probably be very similar to whatever your background color is in this case it's almost like a gray I've added in a little bit of purple because I wanted to just have all this like bounced light going on. I wanted to get a little bit of a cyberpunk feel for this one. Let's make that ear a little bit darker. And uh, his eyes are just a little blown out. So I'm going to back them off. But I did like how they stand out. So I'm just going to make the little iris part a tiny little less, less prominent with a kind of an implied, a kind of an implied little uh, highlight, like there's some mechanical form to these uh, eye, eye pieces that he has. I'm not gonna dig into the detail, I'm starting to see pixels here and that means I'm in too close, so zoom it out. Okay, so here you can see a, a strong distinction. Let's pull up our original, uh, our original line art piece. Let's make a selection using this tool here. We'll just select the area that we caught we did and then we'll copy it. Command V, Command v, uh, I'm sorry, Command C copies, Command V pastes. And let's grab the correct layer and drag that all the way up on top of everything so that we can evaluate how we did with painting out our lines. This is the old version and we're comparing it to the new. We're gonna switch it on and switch it off. Well, it looks like I did paint out a little bit of the line art on that one too, but you should still be able to see a strong distinction. Yeah, okay, so way less comic booky looking, much more painterly, much more painted looking. Um, and so there you have it. That's, what, that's a couple of different tips and techniques that I use to paint out my line art in most of the pieces that I do. Uh, I hope that this helped you in some way. If you have some other solutions that you use, uh, please do drop me a line. Leave those in the comments section or send me a link to any other techniques that you might use or that you've heard uh, work really well. As with anything, it's really going to come with practice. I spent many years drawing comic books and I didn't paint at all or add any color of any kind. And so it really just required me sitting down and learning to do it. 
uh, learning some techniques and tricks that worked well for me. Uh, a lot of it was a build-up kind of an approach. I just found a couple of things that worked and then I added to them. The more I did them, the more I started to find things that also worked. And I think that that's really going to kind of be the best way if you're stuck with kind of like feeling like, man, I just draw with lines and I need to stop and I need to get rid of that. But, you know, the other thing to, to ask yourself is like, do you really? You know, if you really like drawing with line art, there's nothing wrong with that, too. I know there are a lot of successful concept artists and comic book artists uh, and illustrators that still use a lot of line art. Some of my favorites do uh, Akihiko Yoshida, uh, Katsuyo Terada. Mike Mignola, some of these guys still use a lot of strong line art, and hey man, their work looks great too. So really ask yourself why you need to, but uh, if you're working in video games, I understand sometimes you have to, uh, to match the style of the game that you're working on or the film that you're working on. So I hope those tips uh, helped you out a lot. Uh, certainly is a, a challenging thing to learn because you're going to have to learn a lot about painting in order to do it. I highly recommend finding a painter that you really appreciate, respect, and admire, and dissecting their process as well. Now that's kind of why I wanted to open the door on this one and show you guys a little bit of how I would probably reverse engineer a very line heavy piece into a painted piece. And I would do that across the whole painting here. You can see how some of it is still very heavy line arted. I did not do it. Uh, I did not paint a lot of this out. Also keep in mind that sometimes you can do the whole thing in shadow, which is nice. You can have like large areas of the character that are all in shadow uh, and then add in some color highlight over top of that. And you got yourself a nice painted look too. There's also ways, methods that you can use in Photoshop with filters and things like that. And uh, I might dig in a little bit more and do a part two on this if, uh, if this is something you guys are, are really interested in. If you like my art style and uh, you would like to learn from me, I do, of course, make all of my brushes available and, of course, all of my tutorials available in my box sets of tutorials. Or if you're more just into the freebies, uh, you can uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel here and I will be, I update about once or twice a week right now. I'm trying to do a little bit more. I also stream over on Twitch. You can find all that in the uh, text field below the video as well. And dudes, until next time, I'll catch you on manana, bon ciao, baby, yeah.